Well, good morning again from Cornerstone Community Church. Glad that you're able to be with us today. It is February 7th, 2021. And uh, as is always the case, it's good to be together. Trust that this trust that this finds you as well as can be. Uh, wanted to share with the, some of the Cornerstone folks just a couple of news items. A reminder that this coming week is the second week of February. So on uh, yeah Wednesday and Thursday, We'll have our community life groups online via Zoom. Uh, all of you who are online with email will be getting that invite and link uh, this week. So Wednesday and Thursday is our Zoom meeting. And am looking forward, Lord willing, uh, as things unfold to being back together in person, uh, starting that first Sunday in March. That's the, the target, and uh, hopefully we'll be together. Know that some will be there if they can be, and others will probably still be joining online for the next little while. And so do whatever your conscious conscience uh, tells you in, in the sense of what you're comfortable with. But hopefully that first Sunday in March, we'll be back together in the church building instead of just like this. And not that just like this is uh, uh, less significant, it's just a different experience, that's for sure. So. Community life groups this Wednesday and Thursday, uh, heading uh, back into the in-person gathering that first Sunday in March, and then uh, certainly we'll be in touch th th throughout the weeks to come between now and then. Uh, this morning's message <clears throat> is is uh, some of, hopefully, well, if you're watching this, then you probably saw the note earlier in the uh, uh, concerning it. Uh, so this morning's message, uh, as is always the case, uh, had, it, it was... Uh, uh, formed in prayer and 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 uh, certainly now being shared uh, prayerfully and with with a hope that it really will touch your heart. Not that just the message will, but that God Himself will actually touch your heart as you hear from Him through His Word today. Wherever wherever it is, this finds you, and not just geographically. Wherever it is, this finds you mentally and emotionally. Uh, how you're doing physically, you know, your body, um, uh, so much going on, so much different, all that. I wanted to begin with uh, uh, setting up the message with uh, this passage from Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read the beginning of Isaiah 40 to give it a little context and then drop down to the passage we'll be looking at in just a few minutes. Then we'll pray. And then we'll jump into the message. So this is Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And then he goes straight into the prophecy concerning the one who that is all about. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. For all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Of course, that's a messianic prophecy concerning both the incarnation and his life and his ministry. Uh, Isaiah 40, that, that's where that's from. And then uh, these verses uh, at the end of, of uh, Isaiah 40 that we'll be looking at again in just a moment. Um, and we'll see when we get there that this phrase, well, we'll see it right now. If you, if you uh, look uh, in verse, yeah, verse 21 in Isaiah 40 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? That's how verse 21 starts in Isaiah 40. Uh, do you not know, have you not heard? Uh, this is how Isaiah 28 starts in Isaiah 40. Do you not know, have you not heard? God's trying to get across to us that there's something he needs to get across to us. Do you not know, have you not heard? Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verse 28. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope, some translations say wait, on the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And uh, those are 
words of refreshment and encouragement and kindness that that God gives us. Uh, truth, because he says it. He's the true one. And again, let's let's pray that God would use this message in, in, in your heart and my heart, in the heart of all who are listening now, in the heart of all who will listen down the road, that uh, these words will find their mark and that a seed will be planted and that that seed will take root and 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 the fruit of that will appear in the days ahead as we receive God's word implanted in our hearts uh, may he water it and nurture it and cause it to grow let's pray father in heaven we we do thank you for this day and this time to be together this way we are grateful and we pray that you'll take what is shared in these next few minutes and help it to shape us and conform us to be more like Christ. Help it to be the nourishment we need, the refreshment that we look for. Um, thank you that you meet us where we're at, as we are, and somehow you don't leave us that way. <laughs> so please do that again, even now, as we look to you through your word Guide us as we gather together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning's message, the title of this morning's message is uh, Wait and Renew, Mount Up, Move Out, and Keep Going. Uh, a convoluted way to try to condense that passage we just heard. Uh, and some translations, as I said, as I was reading it, the, the word wait is a, is a, is a paused hoping. Um, it's, it's where you... Well, we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> but uh, so the message is wait and renew, mount up, wings like eagles, that's what God says. Move out and keep going. Run, walk, uh, won't faint, won't be weary. Underneath the title of the message on the outline that's uh, posted in the uh, previous uh, uh, post here on the Facebook page is uh, don't let a prolonged, uh, sorry, uh, that's the kind of w wiggling. This is a new setup here. I'll wait. Uh, I'll be careful about that from now on. High tech. We're high tech here at Cornerstone. <laughs> uh, underneath the title of the message, it says, "Don't let a prolonged season or passing situation define, defeat, or redirect you." So easy to type. So easy to say. So easy to hear. But listen again. Don't let a prolonged season or passing situation define, defeat, or redirect you. Because that's always an option too, isn't it? But we're, we, we're gonna let the Lord have his way by his grace. That's, that's the deal here. So the theme this morning is this. If you are weary and or afraid, you should not and need not stay that way. That's not the life that God's uh, brought us to. Weariness and, and fear can dog us and, and uh, grab us every now and then, but that should not be a pattern of life. For sure, for sure, for sure. And the application is this. Hear what God says to do about fear, fatigue, and frustration. Hear what he says about that, those, those realities, and then do what he says. That's the application. Uh, pretty simple. It wasn't all that long ago, <clears throat> last, uh, since we've been in the new house here, it uh, would have been uh, two or three weeks ago, I think. I had three of my rechargeable devices plugged in, in together to the USB hub I used to recharge them. I think I've spoken of this USB hub before. It's a great thing, Amazon thing. Uh, three USB ports, it talks to what's on each end of it. But all three of the devices that were plugged in were nearly depleted. Uh, iPhone, iPad, and uh, uh, Office mobile phone nearly depleted. And they were so far drained that they would soon be useless if they didn't get some downtime connected to the power they needed to receive in order to keep going and doing what they were made for. I know you can see where I'm going here. But, but, but if, they, if they didn't stop what they were doing, I'm, I'm talking like they're living things, but if, 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 if I didn't take them, as they were, you know, the battery was uh, getting to the end zone there. If I didn't take them, stop using them and plug them in and let them fully recharge, it wouldn't be long before they would be useless for what they were actually made for because no power, no, no work. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. So uh, as it pertains to 
us being a rechargeable device, as it were, uh, far beyond a, a lithium battery or whatever it is uh, inside these devices, our heart, our soul, our spirit that can be, that, that like a battery can just, you know, drain down. Um, we too need to stop, stay stopped, be renewed, be recharged, or it won't be long again. I'm, I'm not saying we're ever useless, but if, if we get to the point where, where we got nothing in us to keep going. Um, uh, I was talking a while ago with someone who w was speaking that, that apparently there's this zone in exercise <laughs> uh, where, you, where you get to the point where you have truly depleted your, the, your, the muscles in your body for whatever the exercise you're doing. It's just they got nothing more to give. And if you try to keep going, you can do damage to your body at that point. So that, that's the picture here, that there comes a point where you got to just stop. Uh, my good buddy David Brony, I mention him often uh, at, a, at an event we were at. He's, he said, don't just do something, stand there to make the point. Because if you just keep doing something without ever stopping, uh, you know, don't just stand there, do something. Well, there's also a time to say, don't just do something, stand there. And that's what this is about. So uh, I know I'm not the only one who's got pandemic fatigue going on a year now, right? I also know there are many among us, not just here at Cornerstone, but in our friends, families, uh, our, our relatives, our co-workers, our neighbors, uh, in that sphere of influence, those folks too are experiencing this fallen world fatigue in the midst of something that we have never known in the push and shove and the day-to-day -day -day living. We have never lived unless you are over 100 years old and we're back in that pandemic back in, I think it was 1918, um, that we have never experienced this. And with all our technology and all that we have, there's still this, this, this gnawing reality that in our humanity and in, our, in, the, in the physicality of our being, um, man, there's a lot of really tired people. And on top of the tiredness that comes just from that context are some you know, intense things that have that have happened in some of our lives that are just on top of the fatigue. It's a punch to the gut, and um, and we need the Lord, don't we? So, here's the focus. Have you ever felt like giving up or throwing in the tower? Towel. Rhetorical question. Have you ever felt like giving up or throwing in the tower? Towel. Uh, I've never thrown a tower. Have you? <laughs> Don't know why I can't say the word towel. Uh, I just said it. Ever struggle? This is rhetorical too. Have you ever struggled with fear, fatigue, frustration, or failure? Uh, all of the above here, uh, more than a few times. Well, that's great because uh, it means you're alive and you're aware, being honest. Uh, somehow I trust this morning's message will be just what you need to hear. That's certainly the prayer. If ever there was a time to hear and heed some of the super encouraging and extremely empowering words from Isaiah chapter forty. And 41, it's now. As hard as things have been, let alone as hard as they may be and may yet become, there's a reality blast, right? Uh, people are, everybody's looking so forward to 2021. Like, don't be so quick to, you know, 2020. Yeah, you, yeah we just don't know what the future holds. So again, uh, let alone as hard as things may be or may become, the invitation to trust, I'm sorry, the invitation to turn to and trust God stands. It always is there. You and I always have the option to turn to and trust God any moment, any day, any switch, any situation, whatever. We always have that option. That can always be our choice to turn to and trust God. Um, so that will always stand. As sure as a good pair of gloves comes in handy when you're outside in the bitter cold, some of us know a little bit about that in the last couple of days, uh, so does looking to the one who can give you what you need when you feel like giving in. Because if you don't feel like giving in now, you will uh, sometime in the days ahead. It, far more likely than not, you're going to feel like giving in, giving up, quitting. I just want to I just wanna run away. Um, and so... Again, this morning's message is meant to not just intersect your life, but intercept you if you find yourself uh, in, 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 
in a, you know, just a intense fatigue or intensely afraid or intensely frustrated. Um, this message is for you. So here, here's the deal. If, uh, if you're weary and feel worn out, and if that's not you today, just put this in your pocket. You'll need it down the road. But if you're weary and feel worn out, remember, here's the first point. The world we live in is fallen and the bodies we inhabit are perishing. Reality 101, coming back to the truth, is, is such an important thing to do. The world we live in is fallen and the bodies that we inhabit are currently in the process of perishing. Well, that's good news. Aren't you glad you tuned in? Well, it, it may not sound like good news, but it's it's good to know that as you face reality, right? Uh, under the first point, it says, just like to be swimming is to be wet, to be alive is to be weary. You can't, you, you, there's no way that you and your fallen body and living in this fallen world aren't going to be weary, aren't going to be frustrated, aren't at times going to be just totally fatigued and very afraid. Um, it comes with a territory, fallen world, fallen bodies, uh, fallen people surrounded by every person around us is also a fellow fallen person. And so, so yeah, you're, you're going to feel weary and, and, and worn out. And again, just like you can't swim without getting wet, you can't live on earth without, you know, at times growing weary. So, uh, yeah, turn with me there. It's uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 24. So again, the first point, the world we live in is fallen and the bodies we inhabit are perishing. Uh, we're not going to just park there and end the message there, trust me. Um, but uh, we will. I, I, if you've never clearly seen this before, I hope you clearly see this today. It's in Romans chapter 8. Uh, I remember uh, being, I guess, confronted is an okay word or... Uh, jolted, you know, as a as a baby Christian, coming across this passage and reading these words in Romans chapter eight, verses twenty two through twenty four. Here's what it says: We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. What a word picture! Creation itself is groaning under the weight of the fall. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Uh, so, yeah, I read an extra verse there. But the the concerning the first point of the first part of the first point of this message here is that 22nd verse. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. When what happened in Genesis chapter 3 happened, everything came undone. The way God had intended it to be became the way it wasn't anymore. Sin was present and then death was present and then all of creation was experienced that curse of the fall and so uh so it is important to know that as we attempt to press forward that our fallen bodies move about on a fallen world in the sense of a world that itself is groaning, as it says, uh, in pains of childbirth, longing for, for what's ahead, longing for the arrival of this new life, this this revisitation to, to Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, when creation was the way the Creator created it before sin and death uh, arrived. And... and uh, so I was thinking in an attempt to express this, some of you might recognize the term mixed meter in a in a time signature. A classic song is is a Take Five by Dave Brubeck, and instead of a four four, a quarter note, four beats in the in the bar, each beat is a quarter note. He he had a five four, boo 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 boo, and that extra that that extra fifth beat in every me measure is called mixed meter. So 
another trumpet player, a guy named Don Ellis, was a master of mixed meter. But here's the, the thought, that each one of us is trying to dance to a mixed meter song we've never heard before. And so trying to dance to a song that has a, an extra beat or two thrown in when you're, when you're wanting to just glide around the dance floor with, in, with you know, some kind of rhythmic pre precision and consistency, mixed meter is going to mess that up. Um, and especially these days, it's like the pandemic just rewrote the song of life in a mixed meter. It's never going to be easy or it's probably not going to look too pretty. That's just the reality. And that's how it is. Fallen world, fallen people. Um... And again, all of creation, it says uh, they're groaning as in pains, groaning in the sense of aching, longing, looking forward to. And we can relate to creation's groaning and cre creation can relate to our groaning. There's no doubt about it. Creation itself and we are created by the same creator. So it, we resonate in that. Um, and uh, in that, we are confident that just as the Bible says it will be, it will be. When everything, the, the time runs its course and, and we find the, what is described at the very end of the Bible in the last two chapters, a new heaven and a new earth, that until that time, until we experience that place at that time, uh, all we know is this, is this uh, fallen world and then, uh, of course, these fallen bodies. And that's what we see there in verse 23. But we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we uh, wait eagerly. Uh, that's an anticipation you and I should, uh, should live with every, every single day. Uh, clearly, the best is yet to come. That's for sure, for sure, for sure. And then uh, this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that uh, highlights the the fact, or, or, or clearly tells us, it's this passage in uh, verse, verse 16 in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, tells us, uh, uses these words to tell us this truth. Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are be re being renewed day by day. One of my favorite devotionals in the early days of my walk was the Lord, was, was called Day by Day. And they were devotional thoughts by a guy named Vance Havner. Great book. It's still available. It's still available, I think, on Amazon, day by day. And um, that's how God's doing it, day by day, one day at a time. Though, therefore, we do not lose heart. The therefore is connected to what Paul says at the beginning uh, of uh, chapter 4 when he speaks about our present we weakness, but the resurrection that's ahead. So, therefore... Uh, we do not lose heart, verse 16, 2 Corinthians 4. Though outwardly we are wasting away or perishing, our bodies are not getting weaker as we get older and older. The getting, the, 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 our, our, our bodies are not getting stronger and stronger as we're getting older and older. They're getting weaker and weaker as we're getting older and older. Uh, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, well, which is uh, such a, a, a beautiful well truth, uh, which we can embrace as a, as a promise from God. Um, knowing that's just the way it is. And that verse, that singular verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, uh, presents both realities, that, that though our body is, is, is perishing, uh, decaying, um, that's, the, that's, that's what happened when Genesis, what happened in Genesis 3 happened. Death came, and we get weaker and weaker, and then our body gives out and gives up. And, uh, but our spirit, We've been born again by the Spirit of God. He's writing to believers here in Corinth. Our spirit's alive forever. He's given us eternal life. And so that part of us, that's forever, our spirit. Uh, and God is spirit. And we worship him in spirit and truth. That's our primary identity, spiritual, not physical. And, and, and sadly, we spend so much time, you know, maybe Botoxing or nipping and tucking or whatever, this thing that's just continually going to get weaker and give out. Yeah, I mean, you, you can only plaster so much. But uh, the thing that really matters is the spirit. And to nurture that and to embrace this fact that day by day we're, being, we're, we're becoming stronger and stronger in what matters most and lasts forever, that part of our identity. And um, so inwardly we're, we, we're being re renewed day by day. And then having eternal eyes, um, go over, just flip one chapter over in, in 2 Corinthians to, to chapter 5 and verse 7. 
Uh, I have the wrong reference there. That shouldn't say in the outline 5.17. It should say 5.7. And 2 Corinthians 5.7, Paul's, you know, he didn't put chapters and verses. This is just a letter he's writing. And as he finishes up what we label as the fourth chapter, he continues writing. And then he, it's the same theme where he, or, or, or a, a, uh, a clarification on this theme of, of the, the, you know, the reality of a perishing body and a, and a renewed spirit perishing day by day, spirit being renewed day by day. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he writes, for we live by faith, not by sight. We, we, we live by what we know and believe, not what we may think or feel. That's a very important thing to remember. We live by what we know and believe, that that's our primary, that's what, prime, that's what drives us primarily, what we know and believe, uh, immutable truth, as versus what we may think or feel, which can come and go. Because our, our thoughts can be wrong and our feelings can be whacked. So we live by what we know and believe, not what we just what we think and feel. And having eternal eyes is the key to navigating all of this. Uh, because it's there in 2 Corinthians 5-7, we, we, we live by faith, not by sight. And faith becomes the lens through which we see, which is kind of a play on words, since we don't live by sight, physical sight. So... It, it, you know, I, I'm wearing these glasses. They're trifocals. Uh, our outer man is perishing, including our eyeballs. <laughs> and uh, so, so these lenses determine how I see what I see. And apart from these lenses, I don't see the way things are the the the, the way they are because I'm I'm the one who's diminished and 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 unable to do that. And so, eternal eyes that God gives us are like lenses. You know, you go to a, 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 a an eye doctor and and they write a prescription for, for lenses so that these correct what's wrong here. It's just really cool to live in this day and age where that can happen. And they're so thin and they're so light. It's so good. Uh, no more co Coke bottles, uh, Coke bottle bottoms or whatever for eyeglasses. But the question isn't, are, are you and I seeing things? It's, it's just, what are we seeing and how are we seeing them? And apart from having eternal lives, apart from living by what we know and believe instead of what we may think or feel, uh, delivers us from uh, the limitation of being earthbound always. Because we have eternal lives. We, we see everything that's temporary through the eyes of eternity. And then that allows us to have, you know, it's a values clarification thing for sure. What really matters, what's really valuable. It's not stuff, it's people. It's not things, it's relationships. And and we have the eyes to see that uh, when we walk by faith and not by sight. There's a whole different eyesight, eyesight beyond the optic nerves. So, uh, yeah, hopefully when when you see uh, lenses that give you the ability to see with eternal eyes, it's like, I I'll, I'll take one of those, please, you know. Uh, make sure you get those and you wear those. So the first point again is if you're weary and feel worn out, remember the world we live in is fallen and the bodies we inhabit are perishing. Nothing you can do to change that. All we can do is deal with it and look to God for the grace to do that the best way. The second point this morning is this. If you're weary and feel worn out, remember that God's given us himself. He's our comfort and strength. God is our comfort and strength. Under that uh, second point, it, it says that it says, wait, rest, focus, and be free. Wait, rest, focus, and be free. That's how this plays out. Um, and then it's the question that's repeated twice. Do you not know? Have you not heard? It's not a. It's it's not condemning. It's not you know. Uh, 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 certainly, God isn't asking those questions for us to, you know, to shame us in any way. He loves us and he's very concerned, and so he asks us, "Do do you not know? Have have you not heard?" And if you're not a Christian yet, um, you know, if the Bible's true for the sake of argument, I would argue that you haven't heard yet and you don't know yet. If you're not currently walking with Christ, you, you haven't heard and you don't know. And it's because he loves us that he asks us those questions. Um, so whatever or when we allow the situation, whatever the situation may be, pandemic, um, 
dear friends who are who are just grieving through the loss of a, of of loved ones people who are who are struggling in many ways uh with many many things when we allow whatever the situation is to become greater to us than God is that's when we we begin to wobble and we all do that sometimes sometimes we in our fallenness and in our fatigue and all that, we can allow whatever the situation is to sadly become bigger in our mind and heart. We're more preoccupied with it than we are with him. And then, and then, we, and then we start wobbling because now all the stuff that's not eternal and won't be forever, is, we're, we're treating it as though it will be. And it's not that we're avoiding God so much, I hope, as much as our our. Uh, you know, giving in to this, whatever the passing situation may be, might be displaces God out of, even out of our, you know, view. And of course, the desire is to keep God in place so all those other things can never uh, get between us and him. But again, I'm with you. All of us at times allow situations to become bigger to us than God is because some situations are so overwhelming. They just grab your mind and your heart and it's hard to... To, to you know, it's it's hard to walk up to a ten ton boulder and just push it aside. Uh, I get that, but God is the one who who uh, puts everything in perspective. Um, so when we allow a situation to become greater to us than God is, that's when we begin to wobble. And uh, and then I was thinking about this. Uh, this pandemic sure has made things easier. Said no one ever, right? The, this pandemic this pandemic has not made things easier. This pandemic has made things harder. And in some ways, and in some very important ways, it has made things way harder and heartbreaking. So this pandemic uh, sure has made things easier is something no one's ever said. And in light of that, uh, turn with me to that passage in Isaiah 40. Uh, we opened up with it if you if you weren't here at the very beginning um in in isaiah forty uh, but I, I do wanna for sure highlight the fact that it it is re in, listed there as verse uh, starting isaiah forty verse twenty one and in the following verses but i'm just gonna read twenty one and then jump directly to twenty eight to make the point it's in isaiah forty where if you read the whole chapter, and I encourage you to do that, it's where God, and we started with this passage at the beginning, God says, comfort, comfort my people. Um, and then uh, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, pre prepare the way for the Lord. And it's Isaiah 40, verse 4, that's a part of Handel's Messiah. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. It's a reference to the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And uh, verse 21, when you get to verse 21, you read these words, Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told from the beginning? Have you not understand since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. And it speaks of his majesty. Uh, and, and, and when it says the people are like grasshoppers, it's, it's a it's a it's made to be a a point of reference and comparison not judgment on the insignificance of people uh but do you not know have you not heard has it not been told you from the beginning that's isaiah 40 verse 21 and then we drop down to verse 28 to the end of the chapter do you not know have you not heard the lord is the everlasting god the creator of the ends of the earth he will not grow tired or weary course the implication being knowingly that we will do both but not him and his understanding no one can fathom though some people can fathom our understanding oh let these words find their way to your heart right now he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak which is good news for you who are weary and weak right now he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord or those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. 
It doesn't say might. It says will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And when it sa says soar on wings, run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint, it's obviously uh, imagery to make a point of, of life that, and it clearly says they will uh, uh, soar on wings like eagles. We, we don't morph into an eagle and fly around for a while and then turn back human. Just saying that to make the point for sure. Um, that just like we will, when our strength is renewed and just the image of an eagle is such a, a, a glorious thing, uh, uh, the majesty and all that. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll soar like, like on eagle's wings. We'll have that experience of, you know, being above the fray. Again, not literally, but figuratively to be able to look down upon this pandemic instead of being in the midst of it, to look down upon that tragedy that just hit, that loved one who just passed, that diagnosis you just got, all the earth stuff that can just shake you and bake you, um, that we can, we can rise above it and look down on it with eternal eyes and say, you're, you're not the end of the story. God started this story. He's going to finish this story. And somehow he's going to use all of that for his good and somehow for our good, for his glory, for sure, as he has his way. I'm jumping ahead. So um, the, the, the comfort that, that this brings, and again, the second point is that God's given us himself. He's our comfort and strength. We fix our eyes on Jesus, it says in Hebrews, the author and perfecter or finisher of our faith. Him, not just something, but someone. And as we, as we seek to embrace this in a way that in turn transforms us, which is what God does, the... The glory of the story concerning him having his way in and through our lives is something only God can do. But don't you know it's something God can do? And, and the, the thing that may seem impossible to you right now is that, is that he can do that to and for and in and through you no matter how defeated you may feel, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter, that whatever the, the, the temporary situation is, the eternal God, again, have you not heard? Do you not know? Let me read it again. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's what God says. And he tells the truth. I mean, you know, you know, people often will often, you know, challenge somebody and confront somebody by saying, yeah, yeah th 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 those are pretty powerful words, but can you back it up? Oh, you, ne you never, you, you don't even need to ask God if he can back it up because he's God. Whatever he says. Hmm. It's comforting, isn't it? Especially for so many of us who are tired, who are weary, feel so worn out. Again, I'm coming back to this word about waiting and slash hoping. It, it it's it's a it's a decision we make. Again, going back to what I said at the very beginning about kind of like how there comes a point in whatever your rechargeable devices are that you need to recharge them or they will be useless. 
you, the light in the flashlight won't shine, the power you need to run your computer or phone or whatever, if, if it's not there, it's not there. And so in, in, when we find ourselves in that place, like it or not, um, I didn't mean to say it that way. Uh, again, the reality is you know, some, people, some people don't wind up going to the hospital until the ambulance has to take them, right? Um, and for all of us, we just, we just need to resign to the fact that there will be times on a regular basis that I need to plug into the outlet and just be recharged, refueled, re-energized. And then by the light and direction of God's word, you know, redirect it as need be. If we've wandered for a while or however that may be going. Um, God has given us himself and he himself is our comfort and strength. Again, that passage start, or verse 28 says that uh, he gives strength to the weary. So... If if you don't have a relationship with him yet, you're you're going to be hard pressed to 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 receive that strength, because he's the only one who can provide it, and he can provide it, and you know, I find myself week after week, uh, you know, whether in person or here online, knowing that it's you know more than likely that that there's one or perhaps more perhaps many more people who would even be listening right now but not yet truly know God, only be aware of him, not have a relationship with him. May that come to an end today if that's your story. May you truly find the one upon whom you, in whom you can hope and upon whom you can wait and find him strengthening you, saving you, forgiving you, freeing you, releasing you, redeeming you, embracing you, loving, loving, loving you. You haven't experienced that yet. Um, that's who he is. That's what he came to do. We're going to pray along those lines at the end here in just a moment. Um, and then the, the 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 this last passage in Second Corinthians, and and we'll we'll uh, we'll finish here in Second Corinthians four. We started with verse sixteen there in the first point, but I want to cycle back to the seventeenth and eighteenth verse and end with that. So Second Corinthians chapter four. And we started in verse 16. I'll read it again, but then I'll, and, but then I'll finish with 17 and 18. Um, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. Verse 17 and 18. For our light and momentary troubles. Time out. Light and momentary. Are you kidding me? These are heavy and they feel like forever. That's the point that undoubtedly the Spirit has led Paul to make here by saying that from an eternal point of view, they're light and temporary. For our light and temporary or momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight that far outweighs them all. The ultimate inversion. That uh, That's how this happens. So we fix our eyes on not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It's those second verses, 17 and 18, that that uh, really ratchet down what it is we need to um, know and do in ways perhaps we haven't known and done yet, um, especially as these days unfold within, in the relent, with the relentless nature that accompanies this, this pandemic. God allowed this with his eyes wide open, and he, he's going to redeem all of it. But uh, again, where it says we fix our eyes on what is unseen, because what is unseen is eternal. Things we can see with our physical eyes can really, really distract us. And then we can we can even allow them to defeat us. We can allow them to become between 
to come between us and God, an, an ultimate tragedy that is. But Paul is very, very clear when he says, we fix our eyes not on what is seen. And don't we all struggle with that? Because what we can see is what we can see, and we can see it 24-7. That's why it's so important to, to, to come away and to wait and to hope. And, to, and as we talked about last week, to have a time of prayer and a place of prayer and to keep that appointment because the world, will, it's mesmerizing and it's always calling. It's like we fall asleep and wake up to this blaring voice trying to get our attention and keep our attention. And what we need to do is like an eagle, rise above it, look down on it, have God's perspective, experience God's peace, and then just keep pressing on with that renewed strength, with that renewed hope and that awareness of, of who he is. Um, wanted to end with that. Actually, what's super cool, because this was this uh, past Friday, just two days ago, right? The, our daily bread. It's so wonderful when all these things just seem to dovetail together. Um, and if you read it, you remember the story of Harriet Tubman, and, and it references this verse in Isaiah 41. Uh, it's in verse 13 that I didn't read uh, that says, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your hand. I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand, and, that's you, and that right hand is, is more often than not the symbol of strength. Um, Harriet Tubman was one of the great American heroes of the 19th century, showing remarkable courage. She guided more than 300 fellow slaves to freedom after she first escaped slavery uh, by crossing into free territory into, into the United States North. Not content to simply enjoy her own freedom, she ventured back into the slave states 19 times to lead friends, family, and strangers to freedom, sometimes guiding people on foot all the way to Canada. Of course, that's a, a real picture for our desire as Christians. You know, I, I, I've said before and would argue that the term evangelical Christian is redundant. If we're truly a Christian, we're gonna, we can't stand to just keep the good news to ourselves. As, and sometimes people respond to that in an offensive way. I'm just saying... The same way Harriet Tubman tasted freedom, it's like, I can't stand to think of my loved ones not having this, this experience. That's the same thing with, you know, like the woman at the well, you've got to come and meet this man. Um, anyway, it, it continues, what drove Tubman to such brave action? A woman of deep faith, she at one time said this, I always told God I'm going to hold steady on you and you've got to see me through. Her dependence on God's guidance as she led people out of slavery was a hallmark of her success. It wasn't her leading them out. It was her being led by him leading them out. And if you haven't seen the movie the movie called Harriet, uh, please see it. It was released, I don't know, two, three years ago. Powerful, true, you know, uh, ex uh, an attempt to you know, tell her story. Powerful. Um, she actually did this, kept going back at risk to her own well-being after she could have just stayed up there by herself and been free and safe. What does it mean to hold steady to God? A verse in the prophecy of Isaiah might help us to see that in reality, it's he who holds us as we grab his hand. Isaiah quotes God who said, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, I will help you. And it was just yesterday, after reading that Friday, preparing for this today on Sunday, that Karen Lafferty, she was the person who headed up the ministry I was a part of back in 1987 when I was in uh, Europe with Youth with a Mission, playing the trumpet, doing music and drama street evangelism. Uh, Karen Lafferty, who was the uh, composer of the melody to the song Seek Ye First, became a very well-known song in contemporary Christian music in those days of the church. Uh, Seek Ye First uh, is the title of it. Karen Lafferty is the author. Karen just posted this yesterday on Facebook. This verse, um, uh, Isaiah uh, 41.10. And uh, let me uh, read that again uh, and close with that. Isaiah uh, chapter 41 and verse 10. And then I'll ask the questions, making it real questions, and share the action step, and then we'll pray. Isaiah 41, 10. It says this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That pairs nicely with Isaiah chapter 40, doesn't it? And when Isaiah wrote it, there was it wasn't 40 and 41. It was that long letter he wrote. And so, of course, it pairs nicely. One last time, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. 
brother, sister, weary struggler. Um, if you haven't found God yet, may today be the day and may you experience this for yourself. I am with you. He's been with you the whole time if you aren't his yet. He's been for you the whole time. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. How about that? Talk about a qualified guide. Um, he doesn't just guide you to certain places. He, he, he brings you into being who you were meant to be. May, may he do that uh, in and in for you, uh, even today, for all of us in a fresh way. And uh, the perspective that Harriet Tubman had, again, was connected to her awareness that God was with her and God was for her and he would not forsake her. Long before Romans chapter 8 was written, um, Isaiah was. Same God. True truth for each one of us. Here's the making it real questions. First one is how, uh, how has this perspective helped carry you through this past year? That, that the world we live in has fallen and the, and the bodies we have that are perishing. How has having that perspective, perspective helped carry you through this past year? And then the second question is, how confident are you in God's ability to give the grace and power you need? I hope your confident love, confidence level has risen even a little bit during this time together right now and that it will continue to rise. Your confidence in, in God's ability to give you the grace and power you need as you continue to grow in your relationship with him. And the action step is this. Memorize Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, which we just read, and or verse 4110, that passage or that passage or that verse or that passage and that verse. Memorize them. And then share with a friend or a family member how much they mean to and have helped you in these days. And they'll continue to. Keep telling, your, keep telling yourself the truth about who God is and what he came to do and what that means and how that, how that can show up in and through your life. So we'll pray together and, uh, and uh, thank God together for this time. And, and may you and I uh, and all who hear this uh, find ourselves far more grounded and far more aware of his ability to, to give us what we need in every way, in every situation, no matter what. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we do thank you for this new day. We are grateful to be together with you and one another as we rest in the wonder and reality of your love for us and everyone. And as we press on through this frustrating and fatiguing pandemic, help us always remember it's temporary. While it will come and go, and every situation in which we find ourselves, and even the ones especially with which we struggle, they will come and go. We thank you that you come and stay. We pray for each other and all those we know who are especially tired and struggling so. Many have experienced heartache and are carrying burdens that are overwhelming them right now. May you by your spirit and may, and may we as we follow you, may we be your hands and your feet revealing your heart to and your love for them even now, even today. To make that call, to send that card, to give that money, to bring over that food, to do whatever we can do to lighten the load of those who are really struggling. Open our eyes to them and give us, give us grace to... Uh, to move out and to move on. We hear there's a game tonight. <laughs> and so as I was pondering that even earlier, God, I, I, we, we would pray together, may tonight's Super Bowl bring a teachable moment to us all concerning how good it is to be able to enjoy team sports and competition without it becoming an idol. I know I look forward to enjoying a great game and we do pray that the best team will win. Please never let sports mean more to us than you do, ever. God, we thank you again for being, for you being who you say you are. So would you please be who you came to be, do what you came to do, and give what you came to give to each one of us for your glory and for our good. 
and we turn our eyes upon Jesus and pray in his name. Amen. 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 Here's the benediction. Go now and take the Lord at his word that you will rise up with eagle's wings as you hope in and wait upon him. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Lord willing, see some of, of you Cornerstonians uh, this Wednesday and Thursday for the Community Life Groups online. And uh, Lord willing, see all of you right here next week. Thanks again for being here. Grace and peace.